Good evening, good evening, good evening. It is Tuesday the 4th of November 2014 and apologies if you hear any whiz, bangs or pops. Um, that will probably be fireworks outside that window or outside Mr Dibley's shed. Isn't that right Mr Dibley? It is and uh, I do apologise if my neighbours start banging too. <laughs> Yes, we don't like uh, we don't like too much unwanted banging, but definitely not. <laughs> um, so we have got uh, we've got quite a lot coming up on tonight's show, uh, and we have to start the show really with uh, what we like to call the titles. Vape Scene is proudly sponsored by Health E Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids. Yes, you are watching Vapor Scene here on Vapor Trolls TV, uh, and it is Tuesday the 4th of November, yes, and it's awfully dark out there, which is, uh, which is not good, getting dark so early now, don't like those uh, early dark mornings and the early dark evenings either, not good, especially when you're driving, um, but there you go, never mind. Um, yes, so you'd normally see a bit of news first, and then a bit in the middle, and then Gary at the end. But this week, we're going to put Gary on first. Yes, because it's the longest bit of VT. So here is the final part of MFT for the box mod. See you in a few. <laughs> Okay, welcome back for another week <coughs> and hopefully the final week in this box. I'm going to chop and change, move things around, I'm going to try and be a bit quicker um, this week. Basically where I'm up to, um, obviously last week the ball was flapping around. Um, I've seated that home, uh, a temporary fix at this moment in time. I've installed my switch now, um, which I've gone for a little, like a raise button one, which has got a really nice action on it. Um, what I've simply done now, uh, as you can see, is just power it up, just to test. Buttons are still working. Uh, I've rigged an out of the box fire button because at the moment that's just glued in. Um, so everything's working. Um, I'm going with the stainless steel 5, the Ego, I believe Nora. Uh, I'm going with a Vamo head, uh, the, the standard one, um, I'm using the stainless steel one. The springy one just won't fit in the space down there that I've got. It, it just won't go past the board. And I'm not going to cut the hell out of it just to get it in. I may as well use um, this one. So, going to go away now. going to solder everything up, um, or desolder everything that I've got here. Um, and, uh, and I'll pop back uh, when this is actually fixed in. I think I've got another problem um, that I need to have a look at, um, which is fitting the battery in. Um, I may have to change options on that before the end of the day. But I'm going to pop away, get this fixed in, let it set off, and then I'll come back. And there's our finished bolt. No, far from it yet. Um, literally, as I said, I've gone away. I've uh, glued up the um, stainless steel uh, Vamo head in there. Um, that switch, I'm loving that switch. I know it sounds clicky, but it's a proper, proper one, proper jobby. Um, I've just put it together 
to have a look and see what it's going to look like now. I'm liking that. It's going to be a big bugger though. If you think of that with an Ation compared to like a clony Hannah thing. And then when you bring into the equation the new little dinky, dinky little dinky thing. I'm loving this. The, uh, the eye stick. I'm not going to talk about it because the guys are going to be doing that this week. But it is bloody good. Um, right, as you notice, probably I've not been rude this week. Um, I've taken uh, taken um, heed to uh, to some of the comments um, about me being a raving pervert. So I, I, I'll stop. Nothing about reaming and pushing it in the hole or anything like that today. Mind um, you, I've just done it, haven't I? My biggest problem I am faced with now is, uh, as you can see, we've got all of our space. Oh, Love for battery. Um, problem I've got is an 18650 battery holder. Now if I ease this in and, and sort of show you, it's going to be friggin' tight past that switch. It's going to be very tight past that switch. Now, even if you angle it, at this moment in time, there's no way that bugger is going in. Now I can look at this two ways. I can throw the 1860 holder away and go for an 18500 which would fit in there with room to spare but I don't want to do that what my mission is now um, and I'll, I'll show you this hold up a little bit yeah. <laughs> that kind of never get it on time. so the way that I'm looking at this is there's a massive excess of plastic on this end here and there's a massive excess of plastic on this end here I've got to take the, the knobs off um, Got to get a good grip of that knob, take it off in the pliers and polish it up um, so it sits flush. Now, I reckon with a gnats off this end, a gnats off that end, and probably taking a corner off here. Um, one thing I haven't looked at is how a battery sits in it, which I suppose I should do. Um, so yes, look, I've got room to take pretty much most of that corner off, if need be, to get it down past that switch. Um, these should, I should be able to get those right back because the, the lugs uh, are, are not doing, this is just excess plastic, it's not needed. Let's get it in. Let's uh, let's see if we can do this. I reckon if I take that off, I've got a good couple of mil clearance each side, take the corner off, and that should, let me get a couple of mil, about there, and then take that corner off, and I reckon that will go in. Now it's going to be bloody tight, bloody tight. As I said, I'm going to be chopping and changing and, and going all over the place today. Um, so, we're going to finish this. My next bit, I'm not going to show you, but basically I'm going to attack this with uh, anything that's sharp um, or filey and, and see what I can take it down to. I'll pop back, show the process, and hopefully when I pop back, um, it, it might be fitting in the box. I, I can't promise. If not, we might have to go to the 18500. Um, that would be a complete pain. Let's see if we can get it 18650. It needs to be 18650, I think. Uh, if you're wondering what I've done to uh, fix these in, basically, at the moment, I've just run beads of the zapper gap um, in there. It dries as hard as boogery and will glue anything to anything. Um, but I will probably gradually add a few beads as that soaks into the to the wood and, and it will feel, it, it will hold for a eternity um let's pop away let's get me file out and uh, i'll come back in two right so 14 hours later um i've managed to get the uh, the bug to fit um i mean you can see right up in this corner here i've taken that off to an angle um, so I can still get my contacts on my switch there. Um, what I'm going to have to do in the neg, because I, there's no room um, to run the neg, I'm going to have to cut a groove, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Um, it means my two remaining, uh, I've got three, four remaining wires. Um, I'm going to have to run uh, these two up to the switch. Now, realistically, what I'm going to have to do is go uh, root it, um, I'm upside down, round the back of here, and feed the wire up and solder under the switch um, so they're all on there um, and my neg is going to be coming off here uh, to the neg on the ATI connector up here um, just straight off the uh, 
little loop across should should be relatively easy to get that one in um, but it's in so what I'm going to do is go away and I'm going to I'm not going to we're short on time and I think enough people are, are sort of getting sick of this um, so I'm going to go away like I say run the wires round to the switch solder up underneath um, and then I'm going to cut a groove I'll just get this battery connection out what I mean for this is where the um, because my poswire has got to run in this way I don't want anything to impede that so I'm going to cut a groove in the end of this so the wire will sit in the groove and then solder onto the onto the back plate so cut enough for the wire so it sits flush because I want that as close to the back wall as I can um, and then this will be fixed in place as well so hopefully when we come back um, we should be a bit further I'll, I'll jib in once I've got the the wires routed for the switch um, and uh, I'll pop back and show you that and then hopefully my groove cut as well lots of stuff off camera today but effectively if you want to sit me far sit me see me filing like a loony um, for I mean that took the best part of 40 minutes to get that to fit it was an ass um, I'll show you it when it's done and, and give you a, a rough pricey of, of what we have done pop back in two and there we go um, like I said I've run or as I said earlier probably two seconds ago actually I've now run my wires just underneath the board round and up underneath the switch the reason for running it underneath the switch is because then my 18650 holder will sit down nicely and it's not going to be uh, impeded by any wires what I have done is whether that's going to be in focus cut a groove like I said down this side because this particular wire here that comes off off the pos I need that as flush to the back as I can because I need this holder as flush to the back as I can so by cutting the groove in there what that allows me to do is lay the wire um, in flat and solder it on the back of this here and that will then be absolutely flush um, with the uh, with the back of the mod I might have to take a little noggin out of that corner for it to come through um, I think I will now I've just been using a, uh, a file and I've been using the edge of a file to, to do this literally running that in and out as you do you want to get some real slow strokes going to start with don't just sort of ram it in and expect it to um, to work you, you've got to take it slow ease it in and out and little by little because if you go at it like a ball in a china shop yeah you may get done quicker but you will potentially bugger that bit up so nice and slow and now what that will give me is a little run into the corner and straight round flush I don't even see that I'll show you down there like that I could probably go going a bit deeper I don't know no that will do because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop it's going in there it's going to solder on there and then it's got enough to come out like so there back up to the uh, to the board so I'm going to pop away now um, prep this up I'll come back and we'll try and do the uh, that bit live live recorded back to so I'm back on the bench and uh, I've taken the liberty of cutting down this wire a little bit um, I've left slack on it now I'm gonna have to do a test fit first um, I may the reason I left slack on it I need to have the battery holder out the way to apply the glue to the various bits to get it to set and I don't wanna it's not something I can solder up afterwards now I probably could but I, I don't like leaving it too short so what I'm gonna do uh, round about there is just tin my tip apply a bit of solder to that wire there 
I've then got my connector and what I'm just going to do is bring that in and I'm just going to offer this up to that laying that in flat I'm just getting that in position like so I'll release that from the grips as you can see that gives me quite a bit of playroom to then get that positioned down in case I don't know why I went all northern then like so and then that gives me I'll probably then have to poke that back down in there I can probably get away with taking a a bit more off that I'm, I'm not sure how much I need I reckon let me uh, let me take that off go out a bit just so uh, we're going to take a little bit more off there I think deeply forgot the tin is tip it doesn't help if you don't tin your tip so I'm going to take another little chunk off the thing is you can you can try it in stages taking it off you can never put the bugger back back on if you want to so it's not much but it'll be enough I reckon and I'm going to try and do this with my fingers Hold that in there. Hot, 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 hot. So that it's got less of a a play on it. Enough to tip, stick down inside. I think that's going to be cool. And I've I've added another wire. Um, back up. Uh, to the neg pin of my Vamo lead. Now when all this is in situ I'll just measure that up and that needs to uh, pop on there. What I'm going to do is go away, I'm going to glue this in place, um, get the battery holder fixed and it's going to take a little while to get that to uh, to set off. But we are nearly there. Um, I'm happy, I'm happy we're nearly finished. Very happy. I'm a happy chappy. Yes, you could say, no, he's the happy vapour. Um, but I'm, I'm a happy modder at the moment. Back in two. Right, we're back and I've got my, my POS lead installed. I have one more final connection to make. Um, and we can, call, we can put this bug in a bed. Um, here's my neck lead. Now, it's coming straight off the Atti connector. I don't know whether, all oh, my hands are going to be in the way. Because what I'm going to try and do is just bend that into a shape of such because I'm going to try and ease this down I just grip in the pliers and ease that down up against there like that just need to tin my tip they're both tinned up yeah little bugger ease that down in there and tap that on so that is in place there as me final neg connection now I don't know if we can get down any further so effectively we've only gone and bloody done it um, that was tight and fireworks are going off shall we have a look and see if it works I've still got glue set in from from the battery connector I I didn't think I was gonna Earlier this week, when I lined it all up, I did not think an 18650 was was going in there. Um, but goes to show, with a bit of manipulation, it can do. Let's install our battery. Pause end, dis end, and you can see that where I got glue on. Oh, glue on my battery. Don't glue on my battery. It's still setting. So this will be a very quick test. Um, I don't want any more glue on my battery. Let's pop in our battery. I'm going to slide my cap on. Oh, baby. Hopefully, if I do a five button press, I have the power. And like I said, me pause and minus are all working. 
a connection in, switchy thing in, it's still in a drying state. Let me uh, clag a atty on the top. And there she is, finished. I never thought I'd say that. I thought I'd bloody say that. It's all done. Let's see. I've just closed my air hole. Air hole. Turn it up a bit. Nice. So it's working. It is finished. Um, it is done. Where do we go from here? I'm buggy if I know. Um, I'm sorry if that's taken a while. It's taken a long time to, uh, to get that done. Um, it's still setting. I need to give it some air while it's sitting, so I'm going to uh, take this battery out. You can tell I'm worn out, I'm knackered. We have the mod. The mod is complete, and like I said before, thank you very, very much for making that box and, and giving me it a vape fest. Um, you told me your bloody name, um, but I forgot it. I, I'm shit. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Um, it certainly was a challenge getting back into uh, into modding, um, putting stuff together. I haven't done the best job of it in the world. Um, but it's there, it works, it vapes. Job done, as far as I'm concerned. If it inspires anybody else to have a go, um, happy days. I like it. It is very nice in the hand. Very nice, and I love that that switch. Love that switch. Back to Marco in the studio, um, and we'll be starting something new next week. Um, God only knows what it will be, but uh, I'm going to try and get some uh, some shorties done rather than spanning it out over God knows how many weeks. Hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you later. That was the final episode for the box mod of MFT. Uh, and next week, Gary will be working on something else. And he just wants to mention something about the finished mod. Gary. Yes, the, the finished mod. And I'm, I'm so glad this thing is finished. It's taken weeks. Um, a lot of work in, in that. Um, and what we plan to do, uh, I'm going to put it through some extensive testing. Uh, I want to fondle it a bit and, and, and just... Feel it, if you know what I mean. Uh, but we will be putting this up for uh, children in need. It will be going live uh, on an auction at some point in the very, in the very near future. Um, I'll put my teeth back in. I'm that excited that it's done. I'm, I'm stuttering all over the place. But uh, yes, this will be going up for auction and all the funds will be going to the children in need um, thing that we've got going at the moment. Lots more on that to come. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm just happy it's finished. What we're going to do next week, I haven't got a bleeding clue, um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll think of something. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Dibley. Yes, so that's going to go into the Children Need um, pot, uh, and we'll have a Children Need show uh, uh, early December. I think we're going to be doing that. Um, yeah. But we'll keep you updated as we go on. So let's go to the first set of ads. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to be looking at the Smock Groove 2 that I showed you last week um, that I've been playing around with for ooh, about four or five weeks now I've had this uh, and I've been using it on and off uh, and uh, I've been using it for the past four or five days more to uh, to get a better feel for
how it uh, how it goes and how it works. So uh, we'll see you when I find the ads. We'll see you after the break. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids. Cool. And we are back from the break. Let me go on to my next bit of VT. Uh, and I said last week, I showed you this, which is the Groove 2, uh, a very shiny uh, CP3O mod, <laughs> as I like to call it. Um, other Lucasfilms things are obviously available. Uh, that sound you heard was Gary just leaving Skype because he's having connection issues too. Um, so here's a bit of VT, and when we come back, hopefully <laughs> it'll be good. Watch this. As I said on last week's show, uh, I said I'd show you the Smock Groove 2 on, on this week's show. Uh, and this uh, again came from Callum at uh, Healthy Vape. Uh, and it's the Smock Groove 2, the 2, not the Smock Groove 1, um, which had the battery issue. Now, if I take it out of the box, you're going to see if I can angle it right because of the uh, reflection of this uh, very highly polished gold device um, it is very shiny um, let's take it out of the box I must say what you get also in the box is a, a charger now this isn't again a two pin charger so I wouldn't recommend you use the charger uh, if you get it like this just use the USB cable and the charging circuitry is built into the battery itself uh, which is a 3800 milliamp hour battery uh, and as you can see there if I tilt it right to get the reflections. Um, it is 
very, very shiny indeed. And it is a real fingerprint magnet. You can see my green screen there. <laughs> it just reflects everything. You can see the camera. There you go. There's the camera going on. Um, yes, you can basically see everything uh, in its uh, reflection. So uh, it is a five click on, five click off device. And you'll see there that the display comes on and it says welcome. And this is a variable voltage and variable wattage. Let me zoom right in on it. You can see already it's got a fingerprint on it. Uh, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, as I said. Do press the top button, will um, will allow your atomizer to power up. Um, if you depress the plus and minus at the same time, it changes from wattage to voltage. There you go. Uh, and the voltage goes from 6 volts to 3 volts in 0.1 increments. You can see that. And if you then depress both buttons again, it will turn into variable wattage mode. And this goes from 15 watts up to or down to 3 watts and they're in 0.5 watt increments. So it's 3 to 6 volts in 0.1 or 3 to 15 in 0.5. Yes, if you also hold down the plus button for 3 seconds that will give you the remaining battery and if you hold down the minus button for 3 seconds that will give you the atomizer resistance. And what I'm going to put on this is um, one of these uh, and this is the uh, iClear XL. Um, and that's going to fit on the top. So if I now check the resistance it should show you 2.3 which is about right. Uh, this is a new tank, not used it yet. Um, let's uh, just have a quick look at that. It's Pyrex, paid about £8 on fast tech or slow tech. Uh, the usual kind of affair with the uh, iClear tanks. It's Pyrex with the spinny drip tip. It's a bottom coil device, so we'll take that off. And there it is. And it's easy as chips, easy as pie I should say, uh, just to swap those out. I did get some replacements, but they look pretty much re uh, rebuildable, to be fair. But I'll have a look when one dies, as uh, the usual routine these days. Um, take it apart for cleaning. Let me just put that on his end. Take it apart for cleaning. Literally just unscrew. That's not me making that noise. It's the silicon top and bottom. Now I mentioned on the Gladius tank that they have this now. So instead of just an O-ring, you've got an entire kind of sleeve uh, which allows you to uh, put the Pyrex in. Let's put it back in shot. So it's, just, it's simply a case of offering that back up uh, and then screwing in the base the right way around. There you go, screwing in the base. Screwing those two together until they are hand tight, not too tight or you'll never get it off again without uh, help. Uh, and then you simply fill from the bottom until you get to the top of that little tube. Um, so we're going to fill that up and we're going to use another Halcyon Haze juice from Nigel at Tea Juice, Gin's Addiction. Uh, this is an 18 milligram juice. Again, this is one that I got at Vape Fest. I do like these Halcyon Haze juices because they come in 20 mil bottles, <laughs> not 10 mil, which is very good. Uh, and uh, usual, usual thing, shove it in the side, squeezy, squeezy, squeezy. This will hold about three mils. And a bit more, maybe. Right, there we go. That's just about enough, I think. So we'll put the bottom section back on. And we'll let that soak in. There is no uh, verbal airflow on the uh, iClear XL. I do like the iClear 30S, I have to say. I did kill mine. Um, I used some some nasty juice. Uh, well, the juice wasn't nasty, it was quite nice, but it, uh, it didn't like the polycarbonate tank, unfortunately. So I have purchased a new one. 
um, because I had a load of the iClear 30 inserts uh, which you couldn't rebuild. Uh, I bought a, a couple of boxes of those so I thought I might as well get another entire unit which I did but at the same time I saw the iClear 30 XL um, in Pyrex so I thought that would be good because I do like these kind of tanks I have to say. Anyway, so that's probably uh, soaked in enough. Um, we'll put it on the groove too. And it's coming up at 2.2 ohms. And what we are on, we're on 13 watts. Let's knock that down to 12 watts and we'll see what it vapes like. And it vapes very well indeed. Now I have to say, let me zoom out a little, a little bit. Try not to get all my lights and everything in. Right, there we go. Um, that on there is a tidal little unit. It's very handable. What I was using this for, because I've had this a few weeks now and I've been playing around with it, um, what I was using um, were cartos. I was just testing a load of juice and I had a load of cartos, so I was using cartos on it. And it was quite nice, just very handy. Um, and it slips in your top pocket very nicely because it's quite thin. Um, USB charging port on the side and the difference between the Groove and the Groove 2 uh, they've changed this, these little screws. Uh, there was an issue on the Groove where if you dropped it the, uh, the screws were piercing the battery and causing issues. Now they've reinforced the battery uh, and the battery surround and they've also changed these screws on the Groove 2. Um, so if you like your shinies and you like this kind of form factor, then uh, this might be one for you. Uh, it's £45 from Healthy Vape, um, which isn't too bad for a, a 3800 milliamp hour battery um, device. So, uh, yeah, I'll be playing around with it, and um, I'm, I've, got a, uh, I've got a work thing on Monday and Tuesday, and today will be Tuesday, so I'll be coming home from it today. So I'll be taking this with me and let other people try it as well, uh, and um, giving it a good going over over the next few days. So I shall give you my uh, my better findings, now I've got this on top, um, when we come back to the studio. So um, back to me, see you in a mo. And we are indeed back to me in the studio. <laughs> I've got Gary back now as well. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I was going to put tweets up, but I'm not sure whether that's a good idea <laughs> because when I went to refresh the tweet feed, that's when Wirecast crashed before. So um, instead of putting them up on screen, I'll just read them to you. Um, goth, goth roll kit, I think. Yes, Marco squeezed the MVP too hard. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a you know a slim version of an MVP. Um, and other people in chat have said uh, it's got the same board as a Vamo. Um, it's size-wise, it's really quite quite thin. Get my ruler. It is about 18 millimeters, 18 millimeters um, deep, uh, and the length of it is just short of uh, four inches, 10 centimeters. Um, so it is. Um, it's quite big that way, but not that way, and it fits in your top pocket rather nicely. Keith would like this, I think, because it would fit in his top pocket. Um, and um, I've been using it with the, the iClear tank on, um, and it's, it's rather nice, I have to say. Rather nice. Um, I've recharged it twice, I think, in about 10 days. Um, and I was, at, I was at a work thing, um, as I mentioned in that VT, I got back this afternoon. Uh, and I uh, had a collection of my e cigs with me uh, and uh, there's a few vapors in my company uh, and we were all outside with the smokers outside the hotel uh, and uh, a couple of people thought they'll have a little try uh, and it's the usual case when you've got a smoker who, who first picks up a, uh, an e-cig and this chap <laughs> said uh, can I have a try and I said yes yeah have a try just push the button and have a vape it was set at 12 watts on the Evic Supreme <laughs> made him cry a little bit um, but there you go it was uh, it was quite good. Um, so yes, 
I'm rather liking it. Uh, it's going to be uh, going with me this week. I'm up in Scotland this week, uh, and then on Saturday, um, I'm going um, going to the northeast. In fact, you might want to be there too. Yes, it's the knees meet on Saturday at uh, the New Crown in South Shields. And uh, I'm going to be driving down from Scotland on Saturday morning. Um, so I will be in attendance. And uh, as I said last week, Max in chat has uh, procured a rather large amount of juice from Liberty Flights, the, uh, the temperance range, which uh, she will be giving away to people. Um, dandelion and burdock, please, 18 milligram. Thank you very much. <laughs> So uh, I shall see those of you who are going to be at the knees meet, um, at the knees meet, yeah. Um, what did you think of the uh, of the, the Groove 2, Mr Dibley? It looks good. I mean, I've, I've got a few of, of the original grooves here. Um, obviously, they, they had a little, little problem with, um, with the battery. Um, and I think it was only, they only had one case of a bad thing, didn't they? Um, and it wasn't that bad, I don't think. But uh, it, look, it looks nice. It, 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 they've kept the, uh, the, the features in there of the, of the original and obviously give it a, uh, a bit of a soup up. It, it, it looks a nice little unit. Um, I'm quite impressed with some of the stuff that's coming out at the moment. There's, there's lots of good stuff out there. Like I mentioned, I know someone else, Dave's probably going to mention it um, later on in the week. And uh, I know Dave did on Sunday. The ice stick. I love mine. Yes, I haven't got one of those. I shall have to get hold of one of those at some point. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what people have got at the knees meet on Saturday. Um, Liana, oh, it's too far. I'm sorry it's too far for you, Liana. Liana. Uh, there will, of course, uh, be Vapefest Yorkshire uh, next May uh, and maybe another big Vapefest as well next year. Don't know about that one yet. We'll have to wait and see. What I do know, though, is next weekend, in Ireland, there is Vapefest Island. Oh yes, uh, at the uh, the Lucan Spa Hotel in in uh, Dublin, not too far, about twenty minutes away from uh, from the airport. Now I was going to that, but unfortunately I have to work now, so I've uh, just this evening cancelled my my room. Um, but never mind. Uh, and Shane Dowling, who uh, who will be there, uh, has posted this on his uh, Facebook. He's got a lovely tattoo. <laughs> He's had it done in Palmer. Uh, yes, the Vapefest tattoo there. So, uh, hmm. Shame I can't see it in person, um, but never mind. But I will be at the Knees Meet on Saturday afternoon, so it should be good. Should all be good. Now then, um, where are we? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take the second set of ads. Uh, when we come back, I've got some, I've got some kind of high brow stuff from Radio 4. It's rather interesting. Yeah, um, so we'll have a look at that after we have the second set of ads. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Vapors, do you love discovering new e-liquids? Tell Dripper the types of flavours you like and they'll send you five gourmet juices each month. Experience new and exclusive flavours, all with a money-back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe. Dripper.co.uk
by four radio. <laughs> And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And we're back in the room. Hello. Yes, just discussing there uh, with Gary the, the eye stick. I'll have to have a look at one of those. I'm sure I can have a look at Mr. Dawn's or Sav's or Cat's at the Needs Meet on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Now then, I was doing my usual trawl um, on the stories all over the web and I came across this little piece from BBC Radio 4. Um, and I've kind of edited it down slightly because it was quite long, it's about 18 minutes or something. So I've edited it down and just kind of taken a chunk from it. Um, rather interesting point of view um, from this chap. Have a little listen and uh, see what you think. Cigarettes, however, have had a second coming, a rebirth in virtual form as e-cigarettes. These strange contraptions are only notionally electronic, although their vaporizers do rely on a battery, and they are hardly cigarettes, since they involve neither tobacco nor fire. They come with atomizers to heat a liquid, along with mains plug chargers, LED lights, and cartridges that serve as mouthpieces. The kit supplies the unreformed with their fix of nicotine, but ensures that they absorb nothing more harmful than a spray of flavors that include vanilla and chocolate, cherry and mango, or coffee and pina colada, though the raunchiest brands do brew up reminiscences of Marlboros and Camels. You can now perform the old, bad, deadly, and foul-smelling ritual metaphorically. Rather than smoking, you are vaping. Back in the 1970s, the comic strip 2000 AD predicted that life would be like this when the 21st century arrived. In the strip, the hard-boiled private eye Sam Slade smoked as a credential of toughness. But the publisher of IPC Comics didn't want the character to set a bad example, so Sam was issued with a robotic cigar called Stogie. This obnoxious android occasionally jumped free from his imprisonment between Sam's teeth, stood upright on his thin, wiry legs, and delivered homilies in a Cuban accent. We don't need no stinking electronic cigarettes, hombre. Peoples have been sucking on my battery-powered butt for over 30 years. To suck on a butt isn't much of an advance on the unhealthy practice Stogie wanted to discourage. But he was proved right 10 years ago when a Chinese pharmacist patented non-flammable cigarettes, pipes and cigars, all guaranteed to be free from tar and carbon monoxide. The Hong Kong company that sold them was formerly called the Golden Dragon Group Holdings Limited, but dragons breathe fire, so they were no longer appropriate as spirit animals. The corporate name was therefore changed to Rian, which means resembling smoking. Rian tries hard to deny that its devices are counterfeits. Its e-cigarettes imitate actual tubes of paper plugged into a cartridge that pretends to be a cigarette holder. The company's pipes have stems and bowls of rosewood or agate. And in America, Rian's e-cigar retains a certain brawny, plutocratic mystique by being called the Rian Vegas. Those who are frank about the physical need to which they're surrendering refer to the e-cigarette as an electronic nicotine delivery system, though that has ENDS as its baleful acronym. More stylish users describe it as a personal vaporizer, as if it were contributing to intimate hygiene or rehydration. The element of performance that was so important to the act of smoking remains intact because the vaped liquid is odorless propylene glycol, 
which is also used to produce fog in theatres and at rock concerts. As with the cronut, portmanteau words are favoured. The refillable tube that holds the liquid is known as a cartomizer, compressing cartridge and atomizer. A more guileless sounding alternative is clearomizer or clearo, because the tank is transparent and contains no soaked polyfoam. All these portmanteau take care to chop off the first letter of atomizer, because that initial A, as used in words like analysis or anatomy, and also in atom, the smallest of particles, announces reduction and destruction. As an antidote to that A, the vocabulary of vaping sticks on the precious, modish initial E. As in email or e-ticket or e-commerce, this signals modernity while also testifying to ecological virtue. It's attached to ingredients like the vaporized liquid, which has nothing to do with circuitry, transistors or microchips. This pharmaceutical concoction is no more electronic than a drink of water, but vapors still call it e-juice. It was shrewd to choose the word vaping for the activity and its accessories. Vapor is milder than smoke, less dense and stifling, and there's no suggestion that it can be traced back to some conflagration in a wood pile, a furnace, or your seared throat and blackened lungs. Still, the word's history has its embarrassments, in the medical jargon of the early 19th century, the vapours were fluttery disturbances of the organism's internal weather, which caused young women especially to swoon. Over-anxious to detach cigarettes from their carcinogenic reputation, the promoters of vaping have labelled their own product with a name that once covered a whole range of nervous maladies that probably would be diagnosed today as depression, PMS or bipolar disorder. Vapid the adjective that lurks in the vicinity, is even more unwelcome. Applied to drinks, and by association to the e-juice poured into carto tanks or clearos, vapid means flavourless, flat and stale. Something that's vaporised has expired, breathing out whatever goodness or vigour it once contained. Rather than a chimney, the e-smoker resembles an aerosol bottle, spritzing the atmosphere. The smoker at least stoked up an internal combustion engine and in fits of coughing signalled that a motor was still effortfully working. Vapours, by contrast, exhale nothing but warm air. Vaping lacks the reckless, transgressive sensuality he valued. All the same, he often used the word, most tellingly when he explained how myth removes objects from their proper place in time and uproots them from their origins. Because of myth, Bart said, history evaporates. And repeating the insistent phrase, he professed to find something miraculous in what he called this evaporation of history. What better example of the process could there be than the e-cigarette, which has mythically lived down or wished away all the venal iniquities of big tobacco and denied responsibility for the millions of patients who have expired in cancer wards? Bart called myth a language which does not want to die. Smoking, too, is just such a language, and it has made the same sly protest against extinction. Although the habit has been condemned, the murder weapons it so profitably deployed have made a comeback as electronic toys. Bart argued that myth, rather than accepting obsolescence, will settle for a degraded survival. It therefore artificially resuscitates defunct ideas and, as he says in one of his most haunting phrases, turns them into speaking corpses. Vapour weightlessly blows away, but Bart preferred residue, embers, ash, the fallout from our vices and evidence of our incorrigible, enjoyable bodily existence. Better to burn up than to dissolve, leaving only a flavoured haze behind. The function of myth, Bart warned, is to empty reality. It is literally a ceaseless flowing out, a hemorrhage, or perhaps an evaporation. Myth, as it turns out, is vaping by other means. Peter Conrad was analysing the e-cigarette,
Yes, and we're back to me. Uh, <laughs> now, I listened to that. I listened to the whole program, actually, um, a number of times. Um, and the, 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 I'm, not, I'm not sure if he was having a go or not towards the end. Um, I, I think he might well have been. Um, <laughs> um, because apparently e-cigs deny responsibility for the patients in the cancer wards. Um, and other such things. <laughs> what did you make of what you heard, Gary? Oh, um, well, I think I'm just having some intimate hygiene with my car to my eyes are. <laughs> um, yes, interesting. <laughs> that was, um, I don't know how to describe that, to be honest with you. I, I just, uh, all I can think now is I'm having intimate hygiene with my car to my eyes are, or atomizer. are. <laughs> it was, yes, it was interesting, wasn't it? It was, um, uh, what was the other thing as well about smoking on my robotic butt? Yes, that was the uh, that was the the, the bit about uh, 2000 AD and um, back in the 70s. So you know, a long time ago, people were talking about electronic cigarettes. I'm not too sure um, whether or not using a kind of fake Mexican accent uh, was a good idea. Um, bearing in mind what's happened on uh, Top Gear in the past. <laughs> no. It, 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 <laughs> That's that tickled me that bit to be honest with you. Not many things tickle me, but that, that definitely tickled me. Um, I need to listen to that because I only got the first bit and I'm just I'm having intimate relations now with my cartomizer. Um that's all that stuck in my head from that, to be honest with you. <laughs> yes. Sorry, lost the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well uh I just thought it was a it was a, it was a funny a funny little piece there I'd throw at you. Um, I, I quite enjoyed the whole program, I have to say, um, but it was uh, it was rather rather interesting. Maybe a little bit too highbrow for vapor scene. I don't know. Maybe Lady Mary at Downton would be um, more in place. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure she would be having intimate relations with a cartomizer. <laughs> Oh dear, I've lost the plot totally. <laughs> uh, yes, anyway, we're almost out of time. Uh, I can't go over too much. I must just put this tweet up um, because I got Gothic Rocket's name wrong. It's on a monitor over there and I, I need new glasses. I couldn't see what, what it said. So uh, I do apologise, Gothic Rocket. <laughs> Hi, Feistad can get your name right. Uh, and um, yes, another one from Gothic. Here we go. <laughs> Vapors make young women swoon. <laughs> That'll be me then. Uh, <laughs> so with with that, uh, with that, I think it's about time to uh, to to close the show today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> before before Gary and myself fall apart at the seams. Um, so uh, say good night, Gary. Good night. I shall go and have intimate relations with my cartomizer now. <laughs> Well, I won't. Oh, no, no, no. We'll forget that one. Yes, but uh, I need to listen to that. You uh, do. Yes, watch it yeah. back. So it's just left for me to say, uh, don't forget that uh, you've got RY4 Radio every night of the week. And tomorrow night here on Vape Charles TV, you've got the show with no name. Or does it have a name? Hmm. Tune in tomorrow night at nine o'clock and find out. Uh, and then, of course, on Thursday, you've got the Haze Hour with Keith and with Mr. David Dawn, uh, and we'll see what's going on on his show, yes. Um, on Sunday, you have Dave Kitson with Dave Tucklebox, and that takes us back around to next Monday with Drips and Tips with uh, Andy and hopefully Davey, yes. So this has been Margot Van Basten, <laughs> according to Andy on last night's show. Uh, <laughs> and Gary Dibley. Um, don't forget the Knees Me on Saturday at the Crown Hotel, the new Crown. I'll see you there if you're going. Uh, and uh, we will see you hopefully next week with a steady stream uh, and a steady hand with our vaping in our hands. Yes, so thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. Tati bye. Good night. <laughs> Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade.
UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquid.